No matter the size, no matter the commodity, no matter the origin or the destination, there is a standardized process within Air Cargo that enables Air Cargo to move across the world. And there are some major stakeholders involved within this process. For any consignment moving from any origin to any destination, there is a standard process within Air Cargo. So we have the shipper, or commonly known as the consignor, the person who wants to send the cargo, who passes this to a freight forwarder who consolidates the cargo based on the destination in which the shipment, the consignment, is flying to. The export process then begins, which includes customs clearance, handing over to the airline or to their representative, the so-called ground handling agent. The airline then flies the shipment to its destination, possibly via a transit hub or direct, depending on the distance the airline service is involved. Once the shipment arrives, the process is reversed. So we have the import process, also dealing with customs. Once the shipment is customs cleared, the shipment is then pressed, passed to the freight forwarder, who then delivers it to the final consignee. Now this is the overall view of how a shipment would move long distance from one side of the world to the other as an example. If we're moving shipments domestically or within a certain so-called custom zone, then these restrictions would be not so apparent. Let's take a deeper dive now and see how a shipment that we would like to send would be processed. So a so-called a day in the life of an air cargo shipment. And as an example, let's take from Germany to New Zealand. For example, my grandmother's birthday. I would like to send her an iPad. We don't see each other very often and I would like to have more possibility to see her on camera from time to time. So I need to send her something. So I purchase my item. I then prepare the shipment. So I package the shipment in a suitable packaging. The company that will ship the consignment needs to know where it needs to be delivered to. So to my grandmother. They need to know who it's come from, which is myself. So I need to prepare the documentation. In this case, I would be the consignor and my grandmother would be the consignee. I then choose the company that I would like to bring the consignment to the destination of my grandmother in New Zealand. So I choose my shipping service, whether this is a post office, express courier service or an air freight company offering general cargo services to New Zealand. Once that's selected and I've made the payment, I then hand over the shipment to this organization who then proceeds with the documentation checks, they check the packaging, and they perform the customs clearance at departure. They then hand this over to an airline. The airline will then transport the shipment to New Zealand. Based on the distance, it's very likely that this consignment would fly via what's called a so-called transit hub. So it would fly on two or more flights to get to New Zealand from Europe, simply based on the range that aircraft can fly. Once the shipment arrives in New Zealand, as we saw before on the high level overview, the process is, reserved, is reversed. So customs clearance needs to take place and then the handover of the consignment to the delivery partner for the last mile delivery, the so-called door-to-door -door process. So it's been collected from my door in Germany, it's delivered to my grandmother in New Zealand. And that's how on a deep dive, the consignment would move from Germany to New Zealand and hopefully making my grandmother very happy at the other end on her birthday. There are various process steps that take place during the entire transportation of the consignment from the consignor to the consignee. One of the major areas whenever you're shipping a consignment within air cargo is the documentation. And here you see an airway bill. The airway bill is the master document that accompanies the shipment from the origin to the destination. And there are various things included within the airway bill. So the consignor details, if we go back to the example of the shipment to my grandmother in New Zealand, I would be the shipper, the consignor, my grandmother would be the consignee. I need to include this on the airway bill. I also need to include the pricing. So what are the rates to ship a certain weight and a certain volume or the so-called dimensions of the shipment? What are the various charges that would be incurred throughout the process, whether that's for customs, country import, export charges, security charges, and so on. So there are various elements that make up 
the airway bill, and the airway bill is the master document between the consignor and the airline for delivery to the consignee. And very often within Air Cargo, you will see this in a, in a paper version. Even though we sit here currently in 2022, there is still a lot of paper within the industry. And the industry is very much at the moment within a transition to digitalize the paper elements that we have within the industry, making the data digital, making the data therefore transparent, and then therefore enabling the efficiency of how we move air cargo through the supply chain. So data is certainly on the rise. There is a lot more transparency within the supply chain. And if you take the example again of the shipment from Germany to New Zealand, and you were to choose an express integrator as an example, and let's take DHL Express for the purpose of this exercise, you will be given a tracking number, and at each stage within the process, you're able to very, very clearly see where your shipment is. So you're able to see exactly where in the process, in which country, in which airport it is, including out for delivery at the other end. <laughs>